We've featured a lot of famous trophies on this show. The Hole in the Horn Buck, Old Mossy Horns, the Beatty Buck. The best of the best have been presented here. They are all a part of the King of Bucks collection. Today, we'll feature one more amazing trophy, perhaps the most famous of them all. With a Boone and Crockett score of 333 and 7 eighths, the Missouri Monarch is the undisputed champion of the world, the highest scoring free-ranging white-tailed deer in history. Yeah, I think there's no question this is an incredible animal. I mean, there are 14 or 15 million whitetails in North America today, and we see tremendous numbers of bucks shot. Uh, management is better today than it has ever been. We're producing more bucks in older age classes than we've ever produced before in North America. And so it's incredible to me that this animal still stands as the number one uh, whitetail ever found. Um, certainly an exceptional animal. Oh yes, I knew immediately this was, or I thought anyway, and it turned out to be accurate, that this would be a new world record. Uh, no question, this was, the, the, just the symmetry and the massiveness were beyond description. I mean, I, it was overwhelming. Even though we were calling the department and telling them we had this big deer and could be a record and all this stuff, nobody really believed it. And so it went on for a couple weeks like that until some other people started scoring it and seeing it, and then all of a sudden, everything went crazy on it. The story of the Missouri Monarch begins at the junction of our country's two great rivers, the Missouri and the Mississippi, just north of St. Louis, Missouri. On November 15, 1981, conservation agent Mike Helland was working the public land at the confluence that would soon become the Columbia Bottoms Conservation Area. As I drove into the area, a gentleman was coming out, Dave Beckman, who was actually the original person who saw the deer first dead. He stopped me and asked me if I'd field check his deer, which we did back in those days. So he had a nice 10-point buck and checked it, and he left. And as he left, he said, there's a bunch of guys down here on the levee, and uh, I'd appreciate if you go down and check their deer for him, too. So I did. And as I'm down there, he came flying back down the road, and he said, you got to come with me. And he says, there's a deer you got to look at. The weeds were... Oh, about this high. And you can see the tines, about this much of the tines sticking above the weeds. And I'm sure a lot of people drove by and never saw the deer laying there because he'd been laying there a couple days. So it was just a, a fortunate situation that he saw it like it was. Helen and Beckman knew they had something special on their hands, but they weren't sure just how special. Missouri's wildlife code at the time allowed for the tagging of found deer under certain circumstances. But Dave Beckman had tagged out for the year just minutes before, and Helen, though he had an unfilled tag, was a conservation agent on duty at the time. Both men nobly made a gentleman's agreement right then and there that the rack should be available for display and remain in the public trust. The Missouri Department of Conservation would take possession of the rack for the people of Missouri. It means a lot to the state. It, it proves the health of the deer herd here. It gave them a lot of recognition, certainly. To me, I never wanted possession of the deer because I didn't kill it. Um, it was found dead. I had a responsible landowner that contacted me like he legally should have. The Missouri Department of Conservation soon realized that there was a potential world record on the line. The task of scoring the deer fell to wildlife biologists Dean Murphy and Wayne Porath. I thought, this is ridiculous. I mean, there's no animal can be like this. And there it was, right in front of me. <laughs> and uh, as Dean and I started trying to decipher which was which point, typical, non-typical, you know, uh, that feeling did not subside. I mean, I continued to be impressed by this animal. Scoring the deer was a stunning experience, even for these experienced biologists. The main beams were huge. 24 and 1 8 on the right and 23 and 3 8 on the left. The mass was so overwhelming, it was hard to figure out how to measure the circumferences. And then there were all those points, 19 on the right and 24 on the left. Though highly non-typical, 
there was amazing symmetry between the right and the left. After the Boone and Crockett panel scoring, the news was announced at 3.33 and 7 eighths, the Missouri Monarch was the new world record white-tailed deer. It has held that title for an amazing 33 years. You know, you hear stories about amazing deer, and you, I mean, there have been, throughout the United States, through White Tails Range, there have been some amazing deer taken through the, through the years. Uh, and so the possibility is always there for a unique animal. And well, I'm proud to see that we had it here in Missouri, that's for sure. <laughs> A new chapter is beginning for this amazing trophy. While the ownership of the rack will remain with the state of Missouri, it has recently been announced that the head will be displayed at the National Fish and Wildlife Museum in Springfield, Missouri, with the other amazing trophies in the King of Bucks collection. You know, I think the King of Bucks collection is a tremendous accumulation of what the white-tailed deer is. You know, trophy animals are just the representation of the elite group of that animal. And I think it's an honor that Missouri has the world record and for that to be included as part of that display, for everybody to see the potential that this awesome animal that we all love has, I think is incredible. And just a testament to, again, the quality of these animals and, and the uh, mystique that they have in many hunters' minds. The Missouri Monarch is an understandable point of pride for every Missourian. Bob Zimmer, director of the Missouri Department of Conservation, shares his enthusiasm over Missouri's claim on this world record buck. The Department of Conservation is working with Bass Pro Shops and the new museum in Springfield to display the Missouri Monarch for all visitors to see. And that is so important. If we want the citizens to continue to support fish and wildlife management into the future, they need to understand. They need to understand the importance to quality of life, the importance to state and national economies, and how they plug into that. And deer hunters and individuals that enjoy watching the white-tailed deer, by looking at the Missouri Monarch and the National Museum, they will be able not only to wonder uh, the what-ifs, but they will be able to understand the full story and the history along with that, how sportsmen rallied together, brought back habitat, the white-tailed deer followed, and as a result, animals like the Missouri Monarch are a potential. The Missouri Monarch is the top of the top. It sets the bar very high, and when you look at the world record that it has held for decades, uh, many would say uh, that record will someday be broke. And as a wildlife biologist, as a manager of a fish and state wildlife agency, there's no doubt that's what makes many hunters go afield each fall. But whether it's broke or not, it plants the seed of optimism and it uh, instills that the future is bright for white-tailed deer all across our nation. For the people involved with this amazing trophy, it was the experience of a lifetime. There is no scrapbook large enough to hold a popular interest in a world record buck. And now that experience will be shared with the general public. The Missouri Monarch, owned by the people of Missouri, will take its rightful place, reigning supreme, at the head of the King of Bucks collection.